just so you know, when I do talk to you, I'm going to go across the screen as I see you. So all our screens are differently. Um, Brett, you still there? I lost your audio or your video. Yeah, audio. I'm here. My video keeps dropping off. That's okay. You can still hear us though, correct? Yep. Okay. All right, Barb, it's, uh, or Jane, you're there <coughs> taking notes. It's 5.04. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is David McDonald. I'm the chairman of the Sewer Commission for the town of Lunenburg. And as we go along, I'll do a roll call for the confirm that all the members, persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can, be, and can hear me. Uh, well, let's start off with Mike Null. Hi, Dave. Hi, everyone. John Reynolds. Hi. I'm here. Brett Ramson. I'm here. Carol Luck. Here. Uh, Barb. Here. Jane, by the way, Jane uh, Rayleigh is our uh, secretary and she's off camera. Uh, Kelly Freeman. Yeah. Arthur Freeman. Yeah. And Bob, Robert Bowen. Present. I'd like to introduce a guest. It's uh, Mike. Mike the uh, Mike. Huh? The Vegas. The Vegas. Thank you. There uh, it is. Mike, are you there? Where'd you go? There you go. Up there. I'm here. Uh, Mike is uh, running for the last spot on the sewer commission, and uh, it will be a write-in candidate, uh, as you saw on an email we sent out, which we'll talk about as we go along in the um, presentation. But Mike, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry? Thank you for having me. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, good afternoon. In accordance with the requirements of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and this meeting of the sewer commission is being conducted remotely. The town of Lunenburg in response to the COVID-19 is currently following the guidance from the Lunenburg Board of Health of Massachusetts, the Department of Public Health, and the CDC regarding the virus and steps committee community to take to prevent the spread of the town facilities under the currently closed to public buildings in accordance to the governor's order. Oh, oh I'm in my meeting. Okay. In accordance to the governor's order suspended certain provisions of the open meeting law, all public meetings are being conducted remotely. An order which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 information page, access through the town manager's web page allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so that as long as responsible public access is afforded so that public can also follow along in deliberations of the meeting. Ensure public access does not ensure public participation unless participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comments. In this meeting, the Sewer Commission is conveyed by video conference visa to Zoom app as posted on the town web website and identified how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees and participants of this video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to share your screen your computer, anything that you broadcast may be captured by this recording. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, first thing is announcements and I'm open for anybody having any announcements on the board. Nobody. I have one public announcement and uh, one of them is, uh, as you know, we just had a Memorial Day ceremony in Lunenburg. Uh, it's on, uh, if you want to see it, it is on PAC TV. I just want to thank Joe McLaughlin and the PAC TV folks for putting together one heck of a show. If you do get a chance, please look at it. It's on Facebook and it's also on YouTube and it's under PAC TV in Lunenburg. Next thing would be, go ahead. Before you move forward, I don't know if this is the appropriate place for me to say something or wait until the first appointment, but I potentially might have a conflict discussing um, my name is Phyllis. 1564. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you, want, you want to uh, sustain from it? I, yeah, I think I probably should. Until I find out more information. Okay. Well, we're going to hear their presentation anyway. So. But I will be sitting here listening. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I got is hold on one second, guys. Mm hmm. Bob, I'm looking at my printer. Hold on, one second, Bob. No, Bob, on the next next part, I got billing. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. No. L. 
Okay, so that's a good idea. It would be the building. Um, it's just Q3 due date was March 30. Q4 is, um, that was sent out is June 22nd. And that special legislation uh, passed that no late charges or interest would be levied on unpaid invoices with due dates after March 10th until June 30th. But if they're not paid by June 30th, all interest and late charges from the due date will be levied. So just be careful. Um, if you've got sewer bills due, make sure they're paid by June 29th. Okay. Any questions on that from anybody? Okay. Next one would be uh, the charge to irrigation meter policy and implement implementation date. Go yeah, ahead. it changes just the irrigation meters must be upgraded to re be read remotely by 9-1 in order to continue receiving the credit. The in irrigation program fees of $50 are due by June 4th in order to get your credit on the next billing. Mm -hmm. Any questions from anybody on that? Okay. Next one would be the town caucus. Five zero. Uh, the town caucus has been canceled, as, as we all know. The town elections are going to be held on the 20th. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So at the no. town, I'm sorry. As far as we know. At the town, uh, yeah, as of now, it's the 20th. Nine. What we asked everyone to do, we sent a flyer out or an, an announcement about how we're going to do this on the sewer commission that we talked about in previous meetings. That would be done by red and ballot. As we know, since there was no caucus, there was very little time for us to go out and get uh, signatures. And plus, it wasn't really the ethical thing to do. Uh, so we do have a full slate of uh, people running. And I just want to go through it with you real quick. On the one-year term, uh, if people could vote, that would be myself. Uh, the two-year term would be Mr. Reynolds. Three-year term would be Mr. Uh, uh, Ramson. And the other three-year term would be uh, Michael. Uh, and I know, Carl, uh, again, we want to thank you for your service. I know you'll be leaving after the caucus. And we're going to go back and reappoint Mike Nault after the election. So we'll have a full slate of commissioners going into our next fiscal year. How about that? If that's, um, so I'm very, very happy with that. And Mike, I'm glad you're stepping up and um, doing something, giving back to the community. Uh, I can't say that enough to anybody. Anybody who knows me is I always promote trying to give back to the community. So again, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you very much. Do we have any questions on that so far? I don't see any hands raised. We'll move on. The next thing would be public comment. Dave? Dave? Uh, Carl? I got was, you. I had was a little slow, little slow with the hand raising. Um, I, I'm just wondering if, um, in case anyone's out there or even for, my, for myself, if uh, we could give uh, Mike the opportunity, not Mike Knoll. <laughs> New Mike, <laughs> the opportunity to introduce himself, and um, so if anybody's out there, they can. No, just, just okay. Who he is. Thank you for that. We write his name in. No, I, I uh, thought we did that. Go ahead, Mike. You want to tell you a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do, and tell me you live in Lemus. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, obviously. Well, my name is Mike Devakis. Uh, I've lived in Lunenburg now for a little over two years. Um, a uh, licensed electrician for over 20 years, uh, had a background in running a maintenance department for 10 years, it's included budgets, inventories, projects, uh, getting things that done in a timely fashion, meeting deadlines. Um, you know, this opportunity came up talking with Dave, and I was just kind of hoping I can use my, my knowledge and my skills to add some benefit to the town of Lunenburg. Glad to have you, Mike. That's great. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. If anybody has any other questions for Mike, feel free. This is a good time to do it. I might be in need of an electrician. <laughs> Absolutely. Mike is very first. Mike? Mike? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, wait, just one question. Um, are you sure. um, on sewer or in the sewer service area or what? Uh, I am not on service sewer service where I live. I'm living on Valley Road. Uh, so we're not on sewer service no okay. so in the sewer service area but not connected correct great 
Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We have appointments at five o'clock. I'd like to introduce Kelly and Arthur and uh, Ron. Rob, uh, we're gonna let you go first, Rob, why don't you? Well, the way I had talked about it with my folks is, is they, they were gonna uh, address you with their concerns and I was gonna be here to answer any questions or chime in as necessary. So maybe for the first time in your life, the lawyer is gonna sit here and be quiet. <laughs> no, I know you too. I appreciate that. That won't happen. Yeah. Okay, uh, Kelly, uh, you got the floor. Yes, hi. Um, we're coming to you today as homeowners here at 1564 Mass Ave. We've been here quite some time since 1994. Um, we've been responsible homeowners like anybody else. Um, we have been through, um, we, we, we wrote a letter. I don't know if everyone got a copy of the letter from May 11th to the sewer commission. Did everyone get that? I have that in print right here. Okay, great. So our letter to you was just basically um, reaching out. Our house was built in 1998. Um, in 19... Um, oh goodness. 2002. In 2002, our septic system had to be replaced here in Lunenburg on Mass Ave at our residence. So we took on that expense of replacing it after responsible ownership, um, pumping it all the time, using responsible water use. Um, we had to replumb and everything. And then just recently, um, all these years later, eight, so 13 years into the house being built a new septic had to go in and 18 years later here we are again with a very big expense in front of us um so before i go ahead and put a septic system in the backyard for the third time on this property since it was built i wanted um to present to you what we we're faced with and wonder if there's any option to tie into what is the sewage in front that was granted um for a, a specific need um, years back. Right. So we're, we're questioning whether that's even a possibility. Well, one of the things is, uh, and we know the area quite well, and Carl, I'm going to have to pick your mind on this a little bit. But when Mike and I were on the board the last time, the trailer parks needed an emergency sewer. And I think that that came with restrictions. So it was put in, I think it was done by state grants, uh, Carl, if maybe you could take it over from here if you could. Yeah, it was, you know, certainly was done by grants, whether they were state or federal. I, I don't know the source of the of the money, but it was a it was a special grant from the uh, Meadow Woods. I was getting confused. Um, so uh, it, just off the top of my mind, the things that, that we need to get addressed um, by the right people. Um, one is that point, Dave. Uh, I remember that there was a lot of discussion and debate, but I don't know where it ended up from a legal document point of view regarding whether or not uh, people were gonna be able to connect to that line. Uh, it was the understanding, but, I, but you know, homework has to be done to really run it to ground, that it was not, um, that we could not connect to that line. That there was not, this was not like a normal sewer line. If there's a sewer line in front of your house, you're able to connect. That this was um, separate and different from that. And that uh, connection was not a, was not a given ability to connect. So we have to run down the, the legal documents, and maybe maybe Mr. Bowen has already done that, because um, there may be an exclusion to connect to it um, for, from a legal point of view. Uh, the other, the next layer is even if um, even if there's no legal barrier to it, is there a technical barrier? Um, I, my belief is it's a high pressure line, and I don't know that you can connect what would here would probably be a low pressure. Um, connection um, or or gravity, which I, I I can't picture, but so so there's a technical question has to be answered. Um, even if it's legally possible, uh, is it technically possible to connect to that line directly? Um, the third layer is this uh, property is not in the sewer service area, so um, if you got through all the other hurdles. Um, this would have to go to town meeting to get put into the sewer service area. Uh, and then, um, assuming you could go in the sewer service area, we've, we've seldom had trouble with that. Um, uh, what goes along with that, though, is uh, we've always required uh, proof 
that the property would not perk, that it would not be able technically to support uh, on-site septic, um, in, including in alternative, innovative alternative IE systems. So not just the normal Title V system, but um, it would have to be um, confirmed by PERC tests and um, engineer that it was not possible to put a uh, on-site system on that site, again, including um, innovative alternative systems, which are pretty, pretty creative. They, you know, you only need half the distance to, to groundwater for those. And some, you know, so a lot, some, a lot of flexibility comes with those types of systems. Um, right. The last thing I'll say, <laughs> and then I'm, I'm, I'm playing out of, uh, of thoughts here or things we need to talk about, um, is if you, if you got through the, um, um, everything but the technical issue with connecting to high pressure. Uh, this property is not um, so far away from the low pressure line where this line ends up that it wouldn't perhaps be feasible, um, again, with all the other steps taken. It, it could be feasible to run a low pressure line down um, to where it could connect after the high pressure goes into the, uh, into the normal system. So technically, that could be a solution if the if the only barrier is the technical connecting to high pressure. Uh, there, there's no. usually an engineering way. It may not be very cost effective, but uh, you know there's usually uh, there's usually alternatives. So that's uh, all that comes to mind. That's plenty, I think, that uh, of hurdles that we need to uh, address and uh, in order to uh, entertain this motion. Uh, thank you, Carl. One of the questions I have for you uh, guys. Where is your house in relationship to, does that, does that pipe start at the Townsend Harbor Road intersection or? No, next? it's near the primary school at Arbor. Arbor. So where's your house in relation to? Very Island close. Park? Very close. All right, so Kyle brought up a good point where if anything beyond Arbor Street, if I'm not mistaken, Bob, they can tie into. Is that correct? Well, what they'd have to do an extension. And as Carl said, it's not in the sewer service area at this time. Okay. So. So Let's go through the steps real quick. And this is where you hide the best lawyer in town, Mr. Bowen. Mr. Bowen, what's your take on everything we just talked about? So, so uh, Carl, Carl's analysis is, is uh, similar to mine. Uh, I have not done any independent checking, but, but my memory is that uh, the grant came with a restriction uh, and and people were not permitted to tie in, and in fact, that's why people were not charged a betterment when the line ran by their house. What I don't know, and and somebody would have to look at the documentation, is is whether there was any sunset provision for that, and whether after a certain period of time, uh, the granting authority doesn't care anymore. I I just don't know. Uh, but my memory is there was a restriction at some point. Uh, and and so that's one hurdle. Uh, Carl has also pointed out the technical hurdle. I recall those discussions at the time that tying in uh, would either be impractical or impossible at the time. So uh, that's the other question we do have to get a handle on. Uh, what we did know and what we did discuss was the, the procedure for going to town meeting and getting in the sewer district if we could cross these these other hurdles. Uh, and my understanding from talking with the town manager is that there is a special town meeting contemplated for November sometime. So if if we were able to get all our ducks in a row, that's, that's what we were thinking. Uh, we did not discuss, and I was not thinking, the other suggestion that Carl has made about just tying, quote unquote, just in air quotes, tying into the low pressure line, which would still have all of these same hurdles. Uh, and I guess I don't know enough about your sewer extension process, but are you talking about just tying in this property? Or are, you, are you talking about literally extending the line past all the other houses that we pass along the way uh, so that we'd have to go through your, your uh, betterment approval process? Well, could we handle this as a private extension, Carl? Yeah, that, 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 that's kind of what I was thinking. Normally, um, uh, certainly if, uh, and we've done this in other places in town, at least one of them I'm thinking over on Highland, um, the, the homeowner themselves, once they're in the service 
service error, you know, could um, could request a, a private extension, right? literally just for them run the pipe down. I, I looked on the map, it looks like you're maybe 900 feet or so, um, which is quite a bit, but we have users that are that far away from the, okay. <laughs> that are in the sewer service area. So you're talking about um, a private extension, not a public extension. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, what, what, what we always encourage is, um, you know, go, go, to the, go to your neighbors between you and the connection and see if you can get more people to participate um, there's and a, share and that cost. There's a handful, and, and then I don't know whether Connell Drive would be interested in participating or not. I, don't, I just don't know. Uh, but that, would, that, that goes downhill, so that might create complications. Can I interject for a second? Sure. Okay, um, so if it could be a private, um, I was unaware that there was a low pressure line already in existence. Is that so? Well, that's where this, that's not in front of your house, the low pressure line that ends at Arbor Street. Yeah, okay. supports this product thing from Arbor Street. Great. So yes, that would be something I would be interested in information. And one of the things I wanted to note, um, we look back at the engineering of both installed systems that were put in. They were both engineered right. They both went throughout and they had both great installers. So it, there's some something here that's a deficiency that well, we, we're wondering. It's, it's water. Flexible water table or something that's happening. So, I mean, we, we're going to look at what it's going to cost to put another system in here. Um, so maybe this makes but, sense. We're doing our best and we really appreciate you guys guiding us too. Let me, let me give you a little, a little quick history that you can go and get another septic system, but if you guys have already gone through three. Mm. That's the, unequal. The average septic system now is what, 25,000, give or take? Well, oh, more than that. So I'm in the real estate business and um, the average system cost is 25 to 30,000, yes. Um, but the average life of a septic system should be, with responsible use, about 30 years, give or take, depending upon the soils and the usage. Um, when we installed our last septic system, we had to replumb the entire house to go off the other side. We ensured um, that that tank was overkill, and what they did was, you know, a little above and beyond. And even at that, it was a shock surprise after responsible ownership. So, we would be very much interested in pursuing um, investigating this avenue um, for the integrity of the property for us and for those down the line in years to come. Well, I, I think you got a good team to start. Well, what I would recommend is you have a list of, of items, Bob, that we just talked about uh, that have yep. to be the hurdle. Uh, Bob, do you have your any intake from you? I think it's all, I mean, I've got a private extension checklist, but you need to if you if we want to check check the sunset clause, we want to um, yes, get the information. Just be prepared for a town meeting because it would have to get into the sewer service area. Yeah, so I, I would, private. Okay. I, I would, I would also talk to Jack. I mean, Jack. about about putting in your own low pressure line. As Mr. Luck stated, uh, Bob, I, I would recommend that you go ahead and start doing your research for your clients. Talk to Bob. We can help you out in any way. We would love to have you as part of the sewer system, uh, but we got to do it the right way too. Of so, course. Yeah. Barb, do you have that checklist you can email me? I have a private extension checklist, yes. Yep. Perfect. Great. It, I, would be, it would be nice to get that whole neighborhood. I mean, uh, especially if we can go with an E1 system where it's um, not right, where it's downgraded. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's up to engineers. But, yeah. You know, but I, I think one step at a time. So. Let's see if we can get the sunset uh, provision away. And if not, Kyle brought up a good point. We can bypass that and go right into our little gra uh, gravity system. Uh, so. And and who who would be the keeper now of, of the documentation that would have those answers? Would it be your office, Barb, or Jack, or? I don't know. I would, th I would think the selectmen. It was done, uh, Carl, you may remember better, but the sewer commission was not involved that much in this project. It was really done through the selectman's office. I don't know if the sewer commission existed at that at that point in time. I sh I should probably know the answer to my own question. <laughs> but if I went back and looked, I would probably find that I was one of the sewer commissioners. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> but no, I would think it might be with the selectman's office. It's definitely not in ours. Yeah, I think 
Okay, so I'll, I'll check. I'll check with him. The technical issues, though, that would be with Jack. Yes. Okay. Now, go ahead and Jack comes on board. Oh. Just keep just keep in mind. Once you get this paperwork, uh, uh, Bob, let's take a look at it because uh, you, you're going to have to probably hire an engineer too as well if it's going to be a private. Uh, once you get the approvals, I wouldn't hire anybody until you know what you can do. Don't waste any sure. money, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I just I just want to get those preliminary questions answered so we can decide whether we're going high pressure or low pressure, and then then we can go from there. Yep, and, and we have the people that can help you with that. So I, that's my recommendation. Is talk to Bob uh, tomorrow or sometime this week. It's going to be a short week as it is, but. Any, Thanks, other, any other questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Luck. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, we we uh, we're, we're kind of glossing over one of the one of the most important uh, points, though. Um, source source service area. Um, getting into the sewer service area requires um, proving pretty much beyond a doubt that the land will not support a septic systems. So. Uh, I keep hearing that, the, that, that, that they're looking at those two options. Uh, as long as there's a septic option, uh, even though it's been uh, unfortunate so far, then going into the sewer service area is, um, you know, is really not an option. So I, so I think getting perk tests or determining do you have a septic option would be one of my first, uh, you know, be right up there with uh, you know, can you connect to the high pressure or not? The only I know is that if you're losing a septic system every few years, it's kind of telling me you got a problem already. So Serious problem. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. And almost the same thing that happened over on Pratt Street, Carl, if you remember. Uh, people were losing their septics uh, because of the way it was, the, the way the uh, area was uh, designed. Uh, yeah, but they were, they, they were in the sewer service area. I understand, but I, I guess oh, because of the, Carl, uh, so so it, it, you know again it, 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 because the because the, the systems that were put in failed, right, which is unfortunate, doesn't mean that there isn't uh, a innovative alternative system that wouldn't fail. If you put a system in that didn't didn't need to be four feet above groundwater, then it may not fail. So uh, so an engine engineering really needs to take a look at this. Someone who's familiar with the, the various technologies that are now available because every year there's new technologies um, and see if there's a, a, a technology that is better suited than the ones that you had used, which may well have been just normal old, you know, Title V type systems. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So, Carl, um, everyone, yes, I just want to let you know we, we did um, speak with engineers, um, and, and back when our system was put in, the last system. Um, certain, there was only one type of system that the town was putting in through Board of Health. Now they're putting in Presby systems, which in some cases is a positive, but not always. Um, right. And to put in a system, the engineering and the fill and everything, it, it may be doable possibly here, but if it were doable here, I'm not sure about the longevity of the use. So that's my really biggest concern. Um, yes, no homeowner wants to go through this expense and then twice and then three times. I, I would never want to see it. I, I, I think it's just, I, they can engineer it to look wonderful and it could pass Board of Health, but how long is it going to last? And, I think okay. Mark is correct. When you, when you go, the package that Barbara's going to give you is also going to explain that because before we go to town meeting and, and say, okay, we got to put you into the sewer district. As you said, we do need an engineer saying you can't sure. your property. And your odds are pretty good. But that's another step that that's you have to go. That's the first step, right. So if I may, uh, and, and again, I should probably know the answer to my own question, but uh, this requirement that it, it totally be unsuitable for any septic system is a function of our bylaw. It's a function of the um, the uh, Council of Hanford's waste management plan that we have that the town spent a lot of money on. So we have a plan, and Barbara can show you that. Right. It's our local. It's our local plan. Yes. Yep. I yep. the regulations. It's our regulations. That it has to not be able to be connected otherwise. So. Great. 
So Barb, you and I can interface with that documentation in your checklist. And okay. then uh, Arthur and Kelly and I can regroup and go from there. Okay. Just remember, there is a town meeting coming up in November. As far as I know, I think it's November 5th or 8th. Uh, right. And we got time to, I mean, you got time to do the preliminary to look at it. Right. Right, right. We, we would have never been able to put anything together for, for this town meeting, but for November, we should be all set. Well, even with us, I mean, we usually when we do something like this, I want to look at that map myself. Uh, and again, because of the limited paperwork and computer stuff, we haven't done that. So when we get together, we got to look at the plan and see where the lines are and how close you are and whatever. Sure. Yeah. But we are, I mean, personally, I would love to get that into the town, into the uh, uh, sewer system, but see what happens okay great all right thank you all thank you. you're yeah. welcome appreciate yeah. it before you go before you go guys does the commission any of the commissioners have any questions john um i'm out of this discussion for now oh that's right i'm sorry brett um i don't but is there uh, any need for a motion of any kind before we continue no. okay no. Mike? Um, yeah, but what is this? Oh, go ahead, another mic. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Kelly, have both of the failures been the same failure? No, they're yeah. different. Well, it's been the same failure. It's it's the leach field uh, gets flooded with groundwater. So it's the same failure. Have you guys done a recent perk test to see if that's changed since 19? No, we, we're going to have to do a perk test to get another engineering system looked at but we have um uh looked at the d box and we pumped out the d box and we get clear water coming back out of the field through the d box and so and we have had an um and an, we have had somebody we called and asked them to come out and we said we, we wanted to talk with you folks but it doesn't look um it looks like there could be a system that could be put in possibly, but they'd have to do all those tests, just like you mentioned. So that's where we're at. Okay. Mike, no, any questions? No, no questions. Just want to say, um, hope it works out for you guys, Kelly and Apple. Thank, thank you. you. And no questions for me. So guys, thank you very much. Unless you have any other comments. Right. Thank you. Thank right. you again. All right. Bye Bye. Bye. Rob, it's good seeing you again. Take care. Bye now. Bye bye, guys. Okay, next item. Hopefully, this is the last time. 1170 Mass Ave. Yeah. Heard of it. <laughs> it is not the last time. Well, uh, mm, well, no, I guess not. So, yes, we could be done. I just have not received a document from Michael Ray yet. Um, however, I, I did talk with council and they said it's not the usual way to do it, but it can be approved without having received the final document. It's up to you guys. So I, I would also like to propose, because of the COVID-19 and the restrictions, right now the signature page um, for the document has everyone's name on it. And council had said if the, count, if the commission would vote to approve that the chair sign and have it notarized we would just have to have one signature notarized um so that's another little change but it's just a page that can be re replaced on that document aren't they doing that at town hall is somebody notarizing at the town hall well town hall is still closed it can be done at a bank um but you have to make an appointment okay. i don't you know, my answer, I don't know. You could call the clerk's office and see if they have set up times to have notarized, notary. Okay. But I'm not sure. Um, and then I would I would like to, I, and it's dicey. Again, I wouldn't mind having the abatement voted on. I could get the document to the assessor's office and the collectors to know that we're not going to be assessing any more betterments on any quarterly invoices. But I don't know, until I, really i feel like until we get that final document we know there's no changes we know what the amounts are for sure okay. just, i have uh mr bowen still on the line and his hand is raised so let me just i i i appreciate that and i don't want to interrupt but i just as i was logging off here i heard your conversation and 
Uh, I am a notary, so if anybody needs it, you know where to find me. <laughs> You're right across the street from the town hall, right? I am. So have a good evening. Hey, Mr. Bowen, one question. Didn't, didn't Massachusetts approve the uh, law that you can do this electronically, sign them electronically? Yes, so I can do it that way, too. Yeah, but can, can chairmen of other commissions do it as well by just it, electronically? It should, it should, anything that can be, no, check with town council, but anything that can be notarized can be done electronically in, yeah. in their office or I can do that for you guys. Okay. All right. Thank Have you, sir. Thanks, Rob. So, Bob, you may want to check with uh, Heather. I, I, it just happened like last week as far as everything can be done electronically now. Right. Just like you're buying a house, you can sign off and do the paperwork that way. Yeah. All right. So it really is up to the commission whether you want to do it tonight or wait until we have Michael Ray's document. I, I want to put it to bed, but let's hold on. Carl, you got your hand up. Um, I, I just think it's, it's bad. Um, policy to, to prove a document that we don't have the final document to look at. Do we have the final document? Or are we just waiting I for it? not be in favor. We don't have, um, it was to be signed off by Michael Ray. And, and council went, you know, went, uh, expounded on it, at the fact that he is a selectman, you know, and he, we understand that the whole thing has come agreement, it can be done, but I think it would be their recommendation that we wait until we have a document in hand. I don't have a problem with that. Anybody else have a problem with that? Okay, let's wait until it gets uh, executed by Michael Ray. Thank you. Have you, you want me to call Michael Ray and, and ask him to sign it fast? <laughs> um, he and I have been exchanging emails. I, I tried to see if there was any changes today. I have not heard. So if you want to just drop him a text and say we're, we're waiting on getting it back. Okay. One more person. Next one is uh, SWS termination contract. Yeah. Just that the um, council did send out the notice of default uh, last week, shortly after the council hours. Um, Adam, you know, polished it up and sent it out. Okay. And then we did receive a statement today from Swiss, I think before they got that, of amounts of invoices due, which I have forwarded on to council. Hey, did you uh, do me a favor? You want to send that to the commission? For the next meeting that we have for bills, but we're not paying anything. No, we're not paying it. Right. Until that all squared away. Okay. Right. Um, any questions about SWS? Okay. Next item is fourth quarter billing 522. Go ahead, Barb. Yep. We finally did get it out um, on Friday, 22nd. The due date is the 22nd. So hopefully that'll make people happy to try to get some of our money's in before the end of the fiscal year. Um, the commitment will be, uh, the amount of that quarterly billing was $2,002.752, so that will help us. Um, inserts, <coughs> sorry, inserts were submitted or were included, um, both dealing with just advising residents of the rate increase to go into, that they will see in October to go into effect July 1st, but reflected in their October invoices okay. um, and also the information that it is time to time for new lawns and pool fills and so they got both inserts this this time. A um, couple of statements on that and uh, uh, Mike just let you know we have a pool policy in our town so if you have if you're on the sewer and you fill up your uh, pool with water let us know and we can credit that from your account so you don't have to pay for that extra water because it's not going anywhere right so that's that right. would be a great pool policy yo that's what that means and we usually advertise at this time of year obviously okay and anyone have any questions about that 10 percent? is that enough notice i think it's more than sufficient to send them out in the bills anybody else have any comments on that we'll start with uh john i think it's a good starting point and hopefully that will be it Hopefully, we still got to sit down and talk to Lemisa, but as far as getting the word out there, do you have any concerns of what we just did with the 10%? No, not at all. Um, it, we need to get out there for everyone to hear, and I just hope okay. Barbara's phone doesn't ring off the hook. Carl? Uh, just I, not exactly on that. I don't have any any issues left, but I did want to ask Barb when, it kind of goes with that, when is the next Lemister billing uh, expected? 
well, we just we just got this one. That's part of one of the invoices this evening. Actually, um, excuse me, Bob. <coughs> why, don't you, why don't you hold off? We'll bring that up on the, the manager's report. It's in your business report. Okay. That's okay. all. What else, Carl? Nope, that's it. Okay, Mike? No. Nope. <laughs> Mike, no. Um, no, I'm echoing what John said. I, I think it's I think it's a good start and, um, you know, we'll get some, they know something's coming now, so. Yep. Brett? Any questions? Yeah. No? Okay. Let it go. Bob, thank you for the extra work in doing that. We appreciate that. Also, let's look at the uh, minutes from 512. Everybody have those? Yep. And I'm looking for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the minutes. Yeah, Hold on. Go ahead, Carl. I, I, I second it. I second it for purpose of discussion. Okay. Second. He seconded it, didn't he? Yeah, Carl seconded it. Yep. Any discussion? Go, go ahead. Uh, yeah, just just two two minor things on the section on the RFP generator maintenance discussion. Um, in the the sentence that has the uh, uh, keep it around the budgeted amount of eleven thousand plus repairs. Yep. Um, that should be eleven thousand, including repairs. Yes. That's correct. Is it, does it say plus repairs? I reviewed it. Oops. Yeah. I lost you again, David. Yeah, it does uh, say plus. I, I did review the minutes, but it looked pretty okay to me. I didn't go over the numbers on it. Well, I think we had a budget, 11000 including repairs. Is that, that's the way I remembered it, but I could be yeah. wrong. Yeah, no, that's that's what was discussed, right, wrong, or indifferent, but, it, but yeah. it, that is the case also. But I want to make it clear. I think we also said that we're going to say $11,000, some years it may be less, some years it may be more, depending on what's going on. But the commission has never spent more than $11,000 on generators. You still there, everybody? Yep. I agree. I, I can't see stuff. it going higher than that. That would seem ridiculous yeah. to me. But, um, Especially going out to an independent contractor direct. It's not like going through a third party. Right. So there'll be no markups coming through another contractor. That's that right. yeah. 15, yeah. 20 percent. No, shouldn't be. So again, the point uh, the point regarding minutes was simply change plus to um, including repairs. Okay. I think Jane will get that. Um, I'm sure Jane's got that. Anybody else? Uh, the only other thing, the only other thing um, down in the very last bit, uh, business manager report, um, last sentence, uh, commission discussed issue, and they've suggested presenting the issue and proposal to Heather. Um, I'm not sure what the proposal uh, was. We talked about um, uh, part, the way we got to Heather was we talked about trying to see if um, Munis or one of their subcontractors uh, could do this for us. And, then I, and that's why I think I said that, that Barb should go through Heather to, you know, request information from Munis or, or, their, or their contractors. So um, I'm not sure we have to change the language, but the, the, what, what, it's, it's a little, we should say what the proposal was. Um, Even so, we're not even gonna address that until we all get back together and Start having our meetings over the next year, so I mean that's a, that's a item of uh, that we have to start working on next year. When I say next year, the next administration. Dave, may I? Go ahead, just a suggestion: we could just take in proposal because it sounds it's just the same. Dave suggested presenting the issue to Heather. You know, yeah. that works. Okay, that's good, Barb. All right. Okay. Sorry, I just got to grab my phone. Okay, so Carl, we'd like to have Brett amend the motion to include the change. Is that correct? 
Uh, That's correct. No, well done, Dave. I would have I, I would have missed that. Yep, you're exactly correct. So, Brett, if you want to uh, redo the motion to yes, the change. <laughs> motion to approve the minutes um, with said changes and uh, references from Carl. Great, and I ac I accept that modification. Looking for a second. That was accepted. Yeah. Oh, and that was a second. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, aye. Mr. Ramson. Brett. Aye. Yes. Mr. Luck. Aye. Mr. Notes. Aye. And I for myself. Business manager report. Go ahead, Barb. All right. Um, irrigation meter, please. Just so you know, we have we've gotten like 21 of them already. 39 percent have paid. So we're getting there. Um, stations RFP, we've just, it, I needed to wait until the billing is out and Jack accorded me that <laughs> accommodation. So we can now, we're going to get with council and work on the RFP. Um, generator maintenance, um, it is, is Jack's request. I think it was put back on Jack to get the three quotes, but he would like to do that once the um, new vendor has been selected so that they have input on the vendor or the, you know, the submittals. So that's where those, the RFPs and generator maintenance stands. There is not an RFP for the generator. It will be just three quotes because of the monetary amount. Okay. Um, pretty okay. I've got the two invoices just for your nod. Um, the monthly one from Fitchburg came in, in at 13, 791.21. And then, and that covers March 26th through April 25th. And then the um, Lemonster amount that Carl, just to answer that question, it was dated May 15th. So this is the invoice. Um, and it covers January through April came in as 58 to 6790. So we are going to get through FY20 with just the standard, the, the old method of billing. Super. Thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. And as long as you guys will approve that, I'll note it that we discussed it. You don't need to vote for that, do you? No, as long as and nobody has issues. Anybody have any issues? Nope. Mike, no. Hello, I'm good. Brett? Good news. I do not. John, no issues? No issues. Okay. All right. Uh, inflow infiltration. I have a question on the, on the, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bob. I thought you were done. Uh, yeah. Inflow infiltration. We did have a confirmation that Woodard and Curran will come to the June 9th meeting. Um, I did check with Heather today. Um, on that, whether it's, it, you know, we were discussing a meeting room where we could meet with Woodard and Curran, and it is Heather's opinion that it should remain remote at this time. So, as I just wanted to confirm that June 9th meeting would be remote and whether it would still be at the 5 p.m. time. Just so you know, I did ask Bob about that because other towns are now opening up their town offices as of June 1st, air, towns, and stuff like that. So, we just want to keep ahead of the curve. I think some people still might be kind of afraid to do this or, or go into a meeting room, which I totally understand. So this is not going to be forced on anybody. Uh, so I, I have no problems with it. still doing it on the 9th. And in fact, Carl, that would be good for you because this is your baby anyways. So do you feel comfortable doing it that way? Yeah, um, yeah, 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 I was, I was assuming it would be done that way because I, I, I know that you know, Heather and her team probably, I'm sure it includes Barb, are working on trying to establish the procedures and get the equipment and so forth for opening town offices. So I don't know that that's, I don't even know if that's in the near future or not. Um, so for sure, this this needs to be a Zoom meeting and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, there, there are procedures out there now for opening up town offices or town buildings. That's a statewide thing being mandated by the state. So I'm sure Bloomberg's looking at that, but like so isn't, like I said, 
lot of these little towns are starting opening as of June 1st, which goes along with their phasing plan they have in Massachusetts. But like I said, just because they're doing it doesn't mean you have to be there. So I, I think myself, let's take a look at it for the next couple meetings. Uh, and try to, every time we have a meeting, we'll have to take a look at it. But sooner or later, we're gonna have to go back to work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I do understand for safety is uh, more important than anything right now. Hey, okay, Barb, what else? Put it on my list. Just confirming June 9th at five, is 5 p.m. still a good time? I don't mean, Brett, what do you think? What was that comment? I missed that. Is 5 p.m. okay for June 9th meeting? Yes, five o'clock would be great. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions, Carl? Go ahead. Um, yeah, just um, the, it's, it's, it's more of a, um, we should have a, dis, a dis discussion. The RFPs for the um, station operator, um, and I don't know, I, I assume if we, Barb, correct me if, if, if there's anything special in process, but quite often it, it's good to try to identify um, people who we ought to want to make sure are aware that this is going out for vote. Because uh, I find sometimes with just putting it on the, you know, the, the state websites and things, uh, either people, you know, <clears throat> don't see it, or sometimes they, they see it, you know, they, they know that there's been the same contractor there for three years, or maybe this case is six years. Uh, and they see the effort into responding. So I'd like to suggest that we consider, you know, reaching out to places. I don't even know who they are, or if we know, but maybe Barb, Jack, maybe somebody on the, on the commission here um, knows who might, uh, we might want to make sure they know it's out and available and, you know, and we're seriously looking for someone. Um, that's going, when that goes out, exercise uh, to give it to the, the when, when that goes out, we talked about this a couple of times. Yes, I don't want it to go to the same people who went to last year. I want new. I want to go to that publications, plus other publications. I had a couple of procurement offices friends around the state who were going to give me a list of distributions to put it. Good. So there's the more advertising, the better it is. Great. Here. And, and that's what I, I don't want to put it in the ledger or whatever was done the last time. So it's got to go out, and that should be the policy of any town to do that, anyways. Yeah. You know, the more people, so, the, the better it is. So we'll how are we going to make sure that that? happens we're we working with somebody to do that or is or because i don't think it's, that's going to happen naturally no no i, I already expressed my concern to town manager which i'll follow up on when it's okay. ready to go. great i'm, I'm she, happy she, if you're going to talk to her she's a, group, about group. Office in the town of Lundberg's. okay what else that's it for Bob, me Bob, you done with that i am all set okay uh meeting agendas inputs of future meetings. We're going to be changing a little of this as we go forward, but does anybody have any ideas they want to do at the next meeting? Right now, we still got to, to finish up our uh, RFP. And Mike, no, you and I have to work out some kind of a meeting with Love and stuff. But right now, everything's kind of quiet, so I'd like to let that go for a little bit. Yeah, and let's, work on, let's work on some other issues that we got to do. The main thing is to get a new board up in place and up and running in the next uh, 20 days or 21 days or whatever it is till election time. Uh, but that's, that's all I got, unless anybody else wants to add something and we'll go across the room here. So we'll start with John. I uh, nothing to add now. Mr. Luck. Uh, I think probably the most important thing for the next meeting is um, review of whatever changes get made to our RFP. That yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, and Bob, or you're working with Jack, that we'll be able to, to get that document well in advance of our next meeting so that during our next meeting, we can uh, hopefully finish it off and um, get it out to bid. So I think that's probably, the, the, to me, that's the most important agenda item in terms of near term, getting the business going. I agree. Was that you, Brett? Oh, okay. Well, I agree with Carl that um, it'd be nice to get Michael squared away, get that situation off the plate as soon as possible. If we could do that in the next meeting, I think that would be great. Um, beyond that, um, I don't have anything to add. I've got some distant future thoughts, but it's not worth bringing up now. Okay. Mike? No? Um, 
No, just like to say, looking forward to hearing from uh, Woodward and Curran, and hopefully they have a magic bullet for us. And Mike, even though you're not, not a member, Brenda. <laughs> even though you're not a member yet, what, how was your first impression of the first meeting? You have any questions? Uh, it's really informative. Uh, it's nice to see what you guys are doing, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Well, I'm looking forward to working with you as well. Yeah. Uh, um, one of the things is I just want to thank everybody as we're winding down. We had some real pressure things on this commission uh, by losing some members, by losing a contractor, uh, by the rates. Uh, we, we've all worked very hard to get where we are, so I can't thank you enough. We're trying to keep everything under control for our customers, and I think they're going to get better service, and hopefully we'll go on from there and make our business even stronger. And we can make the business stronger through expansion, through uh, dedication and most of all customer service. So that, that's gonna be our theme going forward, guys. Um, right now, let's like to bring it over to public comment and let's go through if anybody does have any public comment, we'll start with Mr. Reynolds. Uh, no, I do not. Mr. Luck. Nope, no comment. Mr. Nolt. Nope, all good. Mr. Ramson. No public comment here. Okay, and my public comment is, I hope everyone at home be safe Take care of yourselves and your neighbors, and then God bless you all. And again, thank you guys. It's been uh, fun, and we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Bob, do you have any public comments to end the show? I don't. I am good. Thank you. Okay, so the last time I did this, I think I eliminated the whole show. So I'm not going to touch <laughs> the recording. Uh, and if anyone's wondering where the show went last time, I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> I will make a motion to adjourn, though. And I'm just going to say that. I'm looking for a motion. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And an aye for myself. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.